Got it. It's been recorded. Okay, so we've got my, my little AI assistant. R Reed, by the way, is really good, Roger. I've, I've been using it for my, my mentor meetings with, with founders and um, no, yeah, no, well, just one thing. If I'm presenting, I probably won't see the chat screen. So oh, if you okay. see some stuff, yeah. you can interrupt me, all right? Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Oh, we've got we've got the legendary Arfan who who recently um summarized his learnings uh on week one. All together, all the stuff that Simon mentioned, all the stuff Bill, everybody put together, like he just made an incredible summary on LinkedIn and tagged the one percent school. So shout out to to Arfan. Brilliant stuff. Um thank well you, done, thank well you. Well done, well done. Um cool. Uh I think we're just letting people come in slowly. Um we'll just give it a few moments, I think. Maybe maybe start should, should, is it all right, Roger, if we start around about a few minutes past, maybe just to let everyone in, I think. Um is a bit yeah, and you're slow and you're, you're gonna uh Yeah. By the way, it says at the top Zoom meeting forty minutes. Is that okay? Zoom meeting forty minutes. No, it's not meant to be. Let me just check that. Is uh, you gonna cut uh, us all off? I've I've got the I've I've purchased the um have you logged in on that account? Yes, let me just make sure. So I can sign in with Google. Good shout. Yeah, a few minutes just to make sure that we've got everything sorted. Maybe in the break, tell people that if that is going down to a countdown, they just log in on the same. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Let me just make sure. Cheers for that, Roger. I didn't, didn't realize it's been a while since I've been on, been on Zoom. Yeah, I did. I did make sure to purchase the license. <clears throat> but have you gone in on that account? He said. Ah. Uh, yes, it seems. It's like I mean, it's not counting down, so that's probably the. Mm, very strange because I know I know the free version is forty minutes. Um, cool. So we've got people coming in. What I'll do is, I'll, is it all right if I log if I make you host co-host? Yeah. Make host. And then, what I'll do is. Yeah. Perfect. Just for a few moments, I'm just going to... It, it is 10 o'clock, no. No, it is 10 o'clock, just so you know. Yeah, it's cool, cool. It's 10 o'clock. What I'll do is I'll log out, then log, should I log back in on... Um, uh, yeah, I'll log back in, uh, just making sure. Okay, cool. Everyone feel free to grab your drinks, grab your, your, your brekkies, whatever it is, and yeah, see you in one minute. Yeah, strange we've got that, but brilliant. Um, let's just kick off. I think I think that's strange. It's got the forty minutes on there, but anyway, um, it's not counting down, so you're probably not right. counting down. Brilliant, that's all good. Okay, hello everybody. Um, good, good morning to you all. Ishaq, Afia. Oh yeah, there's a few others that we're waiting for. I think they've mentioned Willow and her team. A few others will be coming in, but I just want to say a huge, huge warm welcome back to week two now of uh the 1% school today as mentioned we're getting into the thick of it um week two is going to be twice as much uh stuff as we have it, as we had in week one so week one was all about your kind of your your idea week one was all about the problem space week one was really getting you into that uh into that mode as we said how einstein would sit with the problem if you had 24 hours, you'd, you'd spend the majority of it on the problem, becoming an expert with the problem, uh, and then the rest of the time would be actually with the solution. Uh, and now you're going to be talking, you know, we're going to go through various things, marketing, we're going to go through pitching today, we're going to go through investment, we're going to go through a lot of things just to give you a flavor of what's to come for you on your entrepreneurial journeys, on your respective uh, entrepreneurial journeys. And just a reminder to you all, I want you to remember to learn fast, okay? I know this is, I'm going to want to mention it every single time, but learning fast, what does that mean? It means F-A-S-T, forget. 
first thing is to forget don't you know come into this workshop thinking that you know oh, I know how to pitch I'm, I'm, I'm a thespian at heart or whatever it is I'm, I'm really really good at this stuff no um try to come in forget what you think you knew you knew about this act a active be engaged one of the best ways to be engaged in fact I maybe I didn't stress it enough on the previous workshops feel free to you know unmute yourself interact also turn on your cameras as well it makes it really good and interactive as well but you know at, from our perspective as Roger as a facilitator who's given up his, his, his time as well for this would be really good to see as many faces as possible if not Obviously, I know maybe maybe you're in a, in a in a in a position where you can't ask okay as well, but please do interact in the chat uh, on the mic as well. That's completely fine. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to introduce our next workshop facilitator. I can't do the 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 buzzer and and all the sound effects that I used to do on butter, but I'm just going to give it to you here. Thank you so very much, uh, Roger. Roger is a master in business performance and improvement uh, technology. <laughs> if I can use that word. Um, and social sciences with over tw uh, two decades of experience. Roger's insight into commercialization and startup spin out evaluation are invaluable. I met Roger through a good friend, uh, Catherine, at, uh, at OUI at the Oxford University Innovation Hub. Um, and yeah, we're going to, Roger has worked with various you know, companies. Uh, we're talking about the top tier uh, FTSE 100, SP 500, uh, what we call in the UK SMEs. I know that they're small, medium enterprises, startups, scale ups as well. Remember, we're going to talk about how a startup turns into a scale up, scale up turns into an incumbent over time, right? So, um, today is all about pitching. Please do take good notes uh, for yourself. This will be recorded for those who aren't able to make it uh, today. So, without further ado, I'm going to pass it over. And I can see quite a few of you maybe got a uh you know i'll, I'll be giving giving out no, uh, messages on on the telegram as well just to make sure you're all here together uh but yeah brilliant thank you so much roger for your time and we're ready to kick off well good morning thank you that's um i gotta live up to it now of course mo which is uh so it would be great if i could see a couple of your faces because i get very insecure if i can't see anybody at all so i all think that you've gone off to do something or you're poking your tongues out at me so Anybody want to be the first brave person to show me that there's real human beings at the end of this, or are you uh, you, you you want to stay behind your names? Um, yeah. Got extra, some. There must extra, be. There must extra be brownie some. points. Extra brownie points for. There must be somebody there. Isaac, Ishak, Mustafa, whoever wants to show your face, feel free to as well. I know we haven't made that mandatory at all before, but I guess they're a bit shy, Rog. Maybe they're a bit shy. Right, but if you feel like just. <laughs> If you feel like flashing your camera on for two seconds, waving, poking your tongue or something, that would be brilliant. But if not, we'll, I guess we'll, we'll get on with it. Right, I'm going to share my screen. So let's see whether the technology works. So, Mo, um, let me see what happens now. Hang on a minute. Uh, how's that looking? Oh, c'est parfait. As my, my French teacher used to say, perfect. Is that looking right? Can you all see that? Somebody shout yes. Yes, I guess you can. Yeah, Great. Yes, up. In which case, um, let's start. And what I'm going to do today is... <laughs> Sorry, Jana, say again. No, I think that was just, just a... Um... Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> So Mo, Mo has asked me to show you what, what happens when you start pitching in the in the world as will evolve as you as you start to leave school. So I'm going to um, lift the sneak the curtains open to show you what what happens in the in the corporate, the company, and the startup world. Uh, first of all, I guess what I probably should do as a courtesy is to tell you a little bit about me because you have no idea what lunatic is talking to you at the moment. So. Um, he said, trying to get the thing to work to start with. So that's my name and a couple of silly quick little cartoons. A little bit of background. Um, I am a complete petrol head. I love anything with an engine. I also fly. And as you can probably see in the top right hand corner, um, I am British, but I'm married to a Dane and I spent most of my life traveling. And I'm completely frenetic. That's why my head goes in two different directions at the same time. Mo, can you see the screen all right? 
Perfect, perfect. Can see that beautiful Danish flag Great. and Great. Union, Jack, Union Jack right there That's as well. It. The other thing I do is to help startups, spin outs, and scale outs, and in my previous life, corporations um, achieve objectives. And if they think they're going to fall over uh, or fall off a branch, try and try and help them and rescue them and <clears throat> pull them up. My background is in um, originally I wanted to fly fast jets. Uh, for the Royal Air Force, but they said you're a bit too colorblind. So I went into the airline world. Then I became, um, after a few years, on premise sales promotion manager for Coca Cola Northern Europe, and then worked for Diageo, and then a global performance improvement company. Then started my own company about 20 years, uh, 18 years ago. Sold it three years ago. Thought I would um, not do a lot. And then somebody introduced me to the University of Oxford and said, hang on a minute. We've got some absolutely amazing, crazy ideas, but the people we've got here, the students and sometimes the academics, don't quite know how to present it or talk to the outside world. So could you come and work with us? And I started that about three years ago, and I now work for Oxford and about 13 other universities. Uh, I tend to work with small and medium enterprises <clears throat> to help them go to the next stage. So really my specialism has become people presenting and creating the narrative. So that's what I do. And the bottom right-hand corner with the dustpan and brush, if you can see that, Mo, can you see the dustpan and brush? I guess you can, in the bottom right-hand corner of that, uh, of that post-it. Just check. There you go. Um, that just means that you can ask <laughs> me any questions about anything, and if I can help you with the answer, I will, and if I can't, I won't bullshit you. So the plan here was, Mo said that it wouldn't be a bad idea to go around the room and ask whether any of you have got any ideas so far. Mo, have we got any of the folks on that have actually got some ideas so far? Yes, I think um, I think maybe Afia, Isaac, Isaac as well, maybe, um, yeah, a few of you. I think that those, those were the ideas are in America. So our American uh constituents that they, they obviously can't join us because of the time difference but can, can my uk crew uh do us proud and and and, and let us know if there's any ideas uh and everyone everyone else uh india pakistan wherever you guys are uh dubai feel free so oh yeah anybody, anybody got an ideas that they want to I mean, most talking about a few things like starting i think marketing agencies and things like that any anybody on with some ideas because what i try and do is to make it real so so help me help you. Um, yep. Anybody want to just share in one sentence just what their idea is? Yeah. Um, Afan, do you wanna do you wanna go? Maybe just mention what you're what you're doing is very very impressive. Afan, maybe. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So right now I'm working on graphic designing. I started a small startup like. Yeah, so offering a create like people who need creative needs, I help them, whether it's logo designing, social media posts, so things like that. Oh, great! How long have you been doing it, Alfan? Probably for the past few months. And how's it going? I mean, I don't get like many clients, so ah. yeah, that's like that's the hard part for me. So. I know what happens in that industry. What happens is it's a bit slow to start. And then when you start yeah. doing the work and people then say to the people you're doing the work for, oh, that looks good. Where did you get that done? And then they'll say, oh, there's this really amazing, crazy person called Alfan. And then you start getting business through recommendations. You're, there's, there's an expression which is you're only as good as your last job. Um, mm. The other expression is it takes seven years to build a reputation, only seven seconds to lose it. So that means that every job you do, of course, has got to be pretty good. Anybody else got any ideas they want to just share with me in a sentence like our friend did? Yeah, feel free. Um, for those that have issues with mics and stuff, feel free to put it into the chat. But we'd love for you to unmute and, uh, yeah, give us your elevator little pitch, little kind of, you know, a few sentences. So, Mo, remember, I can't see the chat. So, if, yeah. You, so yeah, of course, just, the chat. Just while everybody's plucking up courage to talk to me. Mo, I think I'd like you to be the champion of the audience because I can't see the faces. <laughs> so if I say anything that either doesn't make sense, is confusing, completely wrong, 
um, you just you just call me out and say, actually, Rog, that might work in your normal world, but that doesn't mean anything to us. Could you explain it, please? So, yeah, Mo, exactly. you 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 be the you be the um, the the the, the, the champion, advocate. the people's champion, the people's uh, champion. Come the on, people, the people's <laughs> champion. Okay. Yeah. The other thing that we have to note is we're from a, we're from different gener uh, generations to these guys. They're, they're they're the Gen Zs. They're they're the ones who are on board with all the social uh, impact agendas and know what's exactly happening on TikTok and everything. So you know you 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 got you got to enlighten us guys as well. Yeah. It's a two way learning exchange, as I said. Right. Remember, I learn from you. You learn from us as well. No, so, I'm not, so, no, I'm I'm not on a different generation. It's just been a long paper round for me. I'm I'm only twenty three. <laughs> Right, so okay, yeah, so, so Mo, Mo said this is seventy-five minutes long. We're going to have a break, probably at about nine forty. So if I get to about nine forty, sorry, ten forty, if I get to about ten forty-five, Mo, and I haven't called a break, you just say, Roger, come on, we all need to go to stretch our legs for a minute. So exactly. let's get into it. If this is about pitching, you don't pitch to yourself; you pitch to an audience or you pitch to a recipient. So the first rule is you've got to understand your audience because if you don't understand them, you can't talk to them in the same language. So I'm desperately, Mo's briefed me a little bit, but I haven't met you yet. And in an ideal world, what I would do is to find out, imagine you're pitching to one, two or three people. I try and find out as much as I could about those one, two or three people because then you can understand what their needs are it's a little bit like in a friendship group and the expression i use most going to close me down as soon as i say this i always think about it a little bit like dating that when you when you meet somebody for the first time isn't it great to know a little bit about them so or or when you 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 meet new new friends and if for example you know they're into i don't know restoring cars or a certain type of music it's great when you first meet them and say hey look you're into this sort of thing I quite enjoy that as well. And I'm going to such and such. So what you're trying to do is to create a bit of a bond. And once you know a little bit about them, you can work out what their needs, their interests are, what their priorities are. So for the purpose of what we're going to do this morning, we're going to assume that you are, and I know on Friday, I think some of you are pitching an idea. Pitching doesn't have to be about selling something. The example, um, I've got a couple of kids and bless them, they've pitched to me about wanting something. And the rules are the same. It's find out what my needs are, what my priorities are. So it doesn't have to be about selling something, flogging something. As you evolve through life, some of the examples I give, yeah, it is about selling, for example, your latest bit of work or your amazing gizmo, your new in invention. But also when you start working, you sometimes pitch for a salary rise. You sometimes pitch for additional equipment. You sometimes pitch for taking an extra week's holiday. So what you need to do is to find out what, what those people are interested in and what they want. And what is it the problems you're going to solve? So if you're pitching not just a new bit of business, but you want a bit of budget to buy a bit of kit when you start work you're going to address the problems that they've got in their company and you're going to show that getting that new computer that new widescreen that new audio system will actually demonstrate a benefit but what i have seen quite often is people go off on one they say i want to and it all becomes a bit of a blur so just the, the main thing is that people normally on a pitch this is not a pitch by the way this is more of a chat and a workshop so these drugs are uh, these drugs these slides are not i was going to say mo i mustn't use the word sex and drugs and rock and roll because it's an old it's an old um it's an old <laughs> tune that that this is not a remake of the latest um <laughs> special effects movie this is just literally to give you some checkpoints and mo you're you're very welcome to pass these on so when you're doing a pitch however that pitch won't go on for 75 minutes um oh mo I've just had a little note here that says this yeah. will end in 10 minutes. 
Well, that's crazy because like, I have logged it. You know what? I'll I'll, I'll make sure I'll work we'll on that on the background while we're while we're doing it. So yeah, please continue. Please. So the other thing to do is if we get cut off, Mo, what should we all do? Should we go back in on the same link? Yeah, we'll we'll come back in on the same link just to let everyone know. Thank you so much, Rog, for for, for mentioning that. But yeah, the same link. We're going to come back in. Um, I, yeah, it's it's weird that it's giving us that that um. Uh, which we've got notification. So, so yeah, uh, we'll, we'll make sure to, to to come back in on the on this very same link, and we'll we'll continue where we left off. I know right, if you manage to solve the problem, give us a thumbs up, and I won't oh, look a bit like a sword hanging over my head. So <laughs> the main thing was to say that when you're pitching something, just think of the three most important things you're pitching, and make everything relate to that. Focus on those things. Be concise. Make it a really understandable message and make it relevant to them. And that brings you to the next thing. So in my world, I work with some really heavyweight, grown-up people. You've probably heard of people like IBM, Caterpillar, Mitsubishi, British Airways, Lloyds Bank. And we teach their board members when they present how to present. And we, what we get them to do sometimes seriously, and even think it's a bit of a joke, is we get them to put two post-it notes on their head, which says, what's in it for them, and so what? And what that basically is saying, it's not what I want to say, it's what's relevant to the people I'm talking to. So, for example, today, I've had to second guess a little bit about what you want to get out of this. So everything I'm talking about, I'm trying to make relevant for what's in it for you, you folks. And anything that's unnecessary it's got to stack up against the so what test. If it doesn't stack up against the so what test, just take it out. It's fluff and it's guff. Car's got four wheels. So what? Car's got four wheels, so it doesn't fall over and it goes around corners. Okay, I'll keep it in. Make sense? The other thing is, it's not just what you want to say. It's what they want to hear. Otherwise, it's just like somebody going off on one. Now, what they want to hear will depend upon what their interest is. So imagine this is in the context of pitching. So in my world, with some of the university stuff, it's not just social sciences. It's very scientific. So the pitches that have to be done to a scientist are different to the pitches that are done to a marketing person. So often when you're pitching, for example, graphics, you're going to be pitching to somebody who's probably slightly more marketing biased. Quite often, yeah. I, I, do you agree with that? I guess you do, because you went yes, which is brilliant. Um, anybody can interrupt or put something in the chat column if I A, don't make sense, B, you disagree. And anything that comes out of my mouth is only an opinion. It's not a statement of divine right, okay? So I'm very happy to take a bit of a date, debate towards the end. So different types of audience, <clears throat> scientific, marketing. Sometimes we're helping startups pitch for money to start off their business. And an investment pitch will obviously be different to a scientific pitch. But at the end of the day, how often have you sometimes met somebody for the first time and they start talking about something and you have no idea why they're talking to you about it? For the first five minutes, they go rambling away and you're thinking, what on earth is this about? And this is what we call listener train of thought, or in that particular case, the absence of a train of thought. And what happens in those five minutes is two things happen to your brain. Now, you remember on that first slide I showed you the cartoon, the Danish flag. My, my other half, she is a, she's a psychologist. And so what I'm going to tell you, I know it's true, and I, I dare not disagree with her, um, especially being Danish and very direct. She's lovely, actually. Um, so... When somebody goes off on something and they start talking to you and you have no idea, two things happen when, when they do realise why. First of all, they get cross because you've wasted five minutes of their life. And secondly, everything you've said to them hasn't been filed in the right part of their brain. It's not so important if you meet somebody, you know, um, for a coffee or something because they can go rambling on about something. But if you're going to talk to somebody about buying something, changing their minds and they don't know why, they're going to get irritated. They can think, oh, I'm really time poor. Just get on with it, will you? Why, why the hell are you talking to me? Okay. So one of the first things on pitching is you have to capture their attention. 
And the way you do that is to do something that's slightly shock and awe, we call it. So I want to give you probably a bit dangerous this moment. Can I, can I give them a couple of examples of things that we've done with spin outs from some of the students? Um, great, your unlimited minutes is working, so we don't all have to disappear. <laughs> That's yeah, great. brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, pl please do. There's some brilliant examples of spin outs from, from Oxford, from OUI, right? So, yeah, I'd love to share that. So, a couple of student things have done. So, there was, a, there was an invention to do this. This will, this will make you smile hacking. Okay. It was an anti hacking device for encryption. And what they did was when they walked into the room, they closed the room into darkness. There were no windows and said, and they closed the room into darkness for 10 seconds and said, don't worry, National Grid's been been um has been hacked no problem generators are coming in uh, lights have come back on and he leaned forward and said now i imagine your mother is on a kidney blood changing dialysis machine and she lives in the country and the power's gone off now do you want to take me seriously so that's what we call a bit of a shock and awe start now do you remember i said a minute ago listen to train of thought how you introduce things to people but well, there's a thing that there's a thing that we use, which is called the pitch canvas. And when you start a business, you've got all sorts of things you're you're associating. And I don't know whether somebody before has spoken to you about a lean business canvas. Have they done the lean business canvas mode? Oh, we haven't. Simon was about to, but oh, I think don't we worry. Just, just went straight in. And can I can I get a quick emoji uh, and uh, um Give me a thumbs up if you're ready for this pitch canvas. It's a, it's a, it's a game changer when it comes to pitching, right? Like everything in one page. Give me, give me an emoji react. I want to, I want to get you active. Give me a emoji react. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a heart. Give me anything. I just want to see that you are engaged. You're in the room. We are brilliant. We got all thumbs up. Amazing. Aaron, Ayla, Amir, Hafs. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Love this. Love this amazing stuff. So they're ready. I, I think they're ready, Rog. <laughs> so I'm, so I'm sending you to sleep yet. Damn, I must try harder. Okay. <laughs> so what the pitch canvas is? It's like the showroom when you when you're starting a business. You, 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 have to, you have to do all these sorts of things. It's a bit like a factory. You have to get the money right, the stock right, the idea right, or the metrics, how you're going to be measured by, what's your unique proposition. And all these things are built up all over the place. But then actually, when you have to show it, present it, sell it, you've got to put it in some form of story. And what the pitch canvas does, it creates that sort of, imagine it's a film or a book with episodes. It gives you the episodes to file all those really important things in, where it slowly builds up in the, the ear, the eye, the mind of the people you're presenting to, what that compelling narrative story is and why you're the best people in the galaxy to do it. So what I'm going to do, you can see it's broken basically into two parts. There's sort of a top half, five boxes, bottom half, five boxes. The top part, five boxes, is the sizzle. That's what you do. The bottom five boxes is the business bit. So I'm going to take you through these boxes and spend less or more time on each one. OK. So first of all, we start off with a simple statement of what change you and your products are making the world. Now, this stops you rambling. In my old world, it's called an elevator pitch. I think you've probably heard the word elevator pitch before. Our such and such helps these sort of people who want to do this by doing such and such and this. OK. So our brilliant graphic design organization helps people in the housing market who want to market their houses brilliantly by creating amazing website pages and lovely social media facilities. Sorry, Arfan, I'm using you as the, as the graphic designer because you're the only person that, that, that came up. But can you see how it works? It really, it, in, in my world, it's called KISS, keep it simple so that's right at the top yeah you, you remember that pitch can a simple statement so what you've just done is you've contextualized why they're thinking or listening to you now the next thing is if you're trying to sell something is is there a problem what are you trying to solve for people and if they can't solve it what's the pain they're going through can you make it a human problem that everyone can relate to um, how many people need the problem solved? Because if nobody needs the problem solved, there's no point in starting a business. So it's a pity, really, that I can't. Mo, 
Can you give me some examples of some of the other startups? Because I'll try and make it real very briefly, if, if even if they're not telling uh, me. So, so, so I think there's some new ideas just being formed. But one of them I really, really love. I think um, uh, it's, it's Shabnam. I think she, she, she has an idea for an AI assistant or, or, or AI kind of bot like ChatGPT, but is emotionally responsive, meaning understands emotions is able to display emotions okay so, next uh, one that, sentence uh that's <laughs> uh, the in well uh, uh, another idea Rog? Or, yeah that's in a sentence go on go for it oh shall i go for that in a sentence we no, okay. go for, you got another one i've got ai I'm oh going another one okay time. so another one was um oh, let me just think it was just let me just remind myself it was per yeah it was just basically taking ancient like old old kind of arabic oud perfumes oud perfumes and then m marketing that in a new fresh way like taking an existing product the innovation is just your presentation marketing which okay. I thought was all right so so all of those i can apply those three things to the pain if you do the graphic design what problem you solve for your customers well i want to sell more or i'm bored with my current marketing on the emotional side is you're solving a problem for for people that maybe want to be helped with their emotional responses and get better things to come out of it. And on the oud perfume side, maybe they're just bored with the current normal types of perfume and they want a unique way of doing it. So you see what we've done? We've, we've dealt with those three bits to start with. Then what you need to do is to work out how many people are interested in it. And there's all sorts of different ways of doing it. I'm not gonna get into it now because I don't have time. What I'm taking you through in 75 minutes would normally take about a day on the workshops that I do. And the most important thing is, is this just a crazy idea between your ears? Or have you actually validated it, checked it, that people want it and will pay to have it solved? Because if they won't pay to have it solved, you're just running a charity. And that little thing down the bottom, which says the mom test is, quite often people think they've got a really good idea and they'll go to their mom or their dad or their aunt and say, I've got this really good idea. What do you think? And because they're friendly people, their relations, their friends, they say, oh, that's wonderful, Fred or Frida. I think it's amazing. That's exactly who you shouldn't go and ask because they're not going to be people that, people that pay for it. OK, so what you have to do is to find a customer. Now, ah, uh, it's a pity we're not all sitting in front of each other because I'd say to you, what's a customer? The normal answer is, oh, somebody buys something. Well, I'm going to I'm going to move this along quickly. A customer is not somebody who just buys something or wants something. They have to have the desire to buy and the ability to pay. Sometimes that's not the same people. Let me give an example. Social sciences, if there's an amazing way to help homeless people get off the street and get a first job, they have the desire to buy, but they don't have the ability to pay. It's the local council. So actually you have two customers at the same time, okay? It's also the fact of validating things. I don't know whether any of you like cars, but if I... Mo, do you like cars? Mate, absolutely love love an old Jaguar E-Type, a Chevy right. Bell. Nice, okay, uh, Mo, that's Mo, would you like an E-Type? Oh, I'd love an E-Type. Burgundy, please. Okay, that's great. I've got one here. It's 200 grand. Would you like an E-Type still? <sighs> Outside my budget, unfortunately. You're not a customer. You don't have the desire to buy an ability to pay. All right. Mm -hmm. So find people that have the desire to buy an ability to pay. Now, very briefly, I'm going to very quickly tell you how you validate and find out what people are. First of all, the way you find them is, are you actually solving a problem or are you just spinning wheels? Who are you solving that problem for? Is it a big enough problem? And would they pay for it? And what do you need to do and make it look like to make it interesting enough for them to, to buy it? And that's great because people will say, oh, yes, I would buy if it came on the market. But you need to establish how much they'd pay. OK. And if you get a negative answer to all of that lot and people say, no, I'm not interested, don't care, doesn't look right, haven't got the dosh, et cetera, et cetera. You know what? You folks are all young enough. Sometimes bad news can be good news in the long run. There's, I work with a guy who has this lovely expression, which is if you're going to fail, fail early. 
Because if you fail early, you get a chance to do other things as well. And I also, there's a brilliant guy who actually, I don't know whether any of you know, I reckon, Afran, you'll know who Adobe is. They made this amazing software for Photoshop and all sorts of things. So he was the guy that started started that company. And, and he said, what do you call a failed entrepreneur and a failed founder? And the answer was experienced. And what that meant is that sometimes you can get just as much out of something that gets messed around, screwed up. So how do you find these people to go and talk to them as customers? Well, if it's in a business environment as opposed to a business to consumer, so when you're selling to a business, you can find them through LinkedIn groups. So that's people with common interests. You probably haven't all got on LinkedIn yet, but at some stage you probably will, especially if you want to get into business. So LinkedIn is the business version. I'm sure most of you heard of it, of Facebook, if you like. It's like a can, I just get, can I just get a thumbs up if people are on LinkedIn? I remember Simon and Bill both mentioning that, you know, get on LinkedIn, start getting in. And give me a thumbs up. So, sorry to cut you. I just wanted to check right. if, if people have taken action. Okay, you haven't. All right, that's okay. That's okay. Sometimes people, you know, it takes a bit of time. But it's essentially just as Roger's mentioning. It's like a like a Facebook for, for networking and putting your CV on for the world really but but brilliant uh, and, and just just another one remember there is no failure only feedback brilliant stuff we're learning so much um yeah thumbs up amazing um, okay perfect back to you roger <laughs> and by the way there's no such thing as a stupid question the only stupid question is the one you don't ask okay so i'm very happy to take any questions towards the back end of this i'm going to scoot along because i know we're going to run out of runway so here's how you can find the people linkedin groups that's collective groups Mr. G. Google, as I call him, Google. Um, LinkedIn by looking at companies specifically. And of course, you can go through company websites and annual reports and things. Okay. So that's how you, you find them. Then the next thing you have to do is describe what you do, simply as possible. How does it do? What, what does it do? I work with a, a really another nice guy who says, there's two boxes here. The next one's going to say product demo. The product is, here's a cake, okay? This is what it does um, and what can you do? Is it better, faster, cheaper for people? And then once you describe, once, you, once you've shown them the cake, you have to describe it. And that's the equivalent of giving them the ingredients. And sometimes it's a live demo. I, I work with a lot of people that do apps and the best way of doing that is screenshots and things like that, okay? Then once you get to the product demo, what quite often is gonna happen is you're not gonna have something that's particularly unique. Because unless you've just invented a new type of nuclear fusion, some the expression is, and it's a horrible collection of three words, paradigm shifting, changing technology. Chance of you doing that, unless your name is Einstein, is pretty remote. But if you are launching something that is a brand new form of AI, emotional intelligence, or a brand new perfume, or a graphic, a graphic design company, what you then have to do is to demonstrate what's unique. Why are you better? And there's a really good way of doing this sometimes. And again, a bit of a masterclass if we ever meet again, you can do it so simply. You work out all the important things that are important to your, to your customer, all these key attributes, and then you put your nearest competitors. And guess what? You get a tick in all of those boxes and the other people look as if a mouse has eaten holes in the cheese, all right? So it's also a good way of... A lot of people will say, yeah, oh, no, not another graphics design company, not another perfume. Oh, really, it's another app with a bit of AI. You can head that objection off of the pass by saying when you get to this, but surely other people are doing this. Well, actually, they are, but they don't do it as well as me. OK. So that is the the, the, the way in which you start to present the 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 product for the product. So this would be a, a good place to take a break if you want to take a break. Should we should we literally just take a five minute break? I make it, what time do you make it, Mo? Should we do it up to 42 then, 1042 here? All right, I don't, I don't care it. what it says on your watch, come back in five minutes. <laughs> I don't care what it says on Mo's watch, come back in five minutes, all right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, is everyone all right with that, yeah? So feel free to to absorb while 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 Rog goes for a break as well. Just just a note, just to 
absorb this in. Remember what we said about active note taking. It's it's the text and your context as well, right? So we've got the text over here, the pitch canvas, and we're adding the context, which is your idea as it is. Hopefully, this is going to give you the confidence that next time when I ask you to let me know your idea, you're going to say it straight without any kind of, you know, second thoughts and second guessing yourselves. Don't, like we said, there's no failure. There's only feedback, right? You have to you have to be able to instantiate your idea. A lot of you've done a really good job when you applied uh, for the 1% school. You had a really good, like, succinct kind of um, explanation of your idea. We just want to hear you say it. You've got to say it. You've got to have the ability to kind of, you know, unmute yourselves and, and say it. So please do, uh, in this break, while you're stretching and rehydrating yourselves, come back and would love to hear from you as well, okay? Cool. If you don't, if you don't say it, it'll just say the world's best kept secret. And you'll never, <laughs> never move it, never know about it. Right, see you in five minutes, folks. Uh, see you in a bit.
Elvis is back in the building. Elvis is back. Amazing. We've got a question from Arfan. In every pitch I have seen, they are asking for investment. But in my case, I don't need any investment. I'm seeking for clients. So is it necessary to talk about the investment during pitching? My short answer is no. You don't have to talk about the investment for this one. But um, uh, but yeah, um, would yeah, would love to get Roger's thoughts. I think for for, for are you talking about Arfan? You talking about for for Friday? For Friday, it would be enough to talk about your business model, all the things that I mentioned on here. Um, investment, you can maybe, yeah, it's up to you. If you, if, you, if you know, there, there may be people that could invest in your business if you need it, but if not, that's okay. I think, yeah, we might have a have a VC or a angel investor in the audience that would be happy to support maybe some of you who knows uh, our friend are you there now or are you are you off off the uh, mic if you're there now i'd like to add something yeah i think he is because it was 10 41 that he put that message in yeah he's here yeah. yeah he's in the building nice one Mark. everyone else give us a thumbs up if you're back yeah give us a thumbs up okay let's start Brilliant, Isaac, Ayla, Aaron. Aaron, are you there? Hafs. All right. Yeah. Aaron, Anna. Okay, brilliant. Cool. Because like majority of us are back, like seventy five percent. Should we start? <laughs> yeah, we can. We can kick kick things back off. Amazing. Let me just uh, see. Yeah, we're recording as well. I'm not sure where, where where that's going, but we've got two two recordings going on. We've got a free day I and then we've got a Zoom recording as well. So that might be going. Since, since you're host, would that go to you? Just a random question. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, Aaron's in the building. Amazing. No idea. Um, okay, no worries. We've, we've we've got it recorded though. So brilliant. Cool. Okay. So we've dealt with the first half. Now we go to the bottom half. Now, when you pitch on. Friday, this might not be so relevant to you. So I'm going to bounce through it really quickly. So if, for example, to Arfan's point, you, you're not pitching for money, you're just pitching for clients, then you just keep it relevant to the top bit, which is what do you do? What's the problem you're solving? What's the benefit of solving that problem? What is it you do for a living and why you're so marvellous about it, which is the what's unique? So customer traction would be, so let's just use this, Arfan, I'm going to stay on you. Let's assume you're pitching for a new graphics client. They would like to know what work you've done for other people to make sure that they're not the first guinea pig, okay? So customer attraction means um, what success you had so far? Have you got any initial customers? Have you got some good feedback? Okay, I'm going to bounce through this really, really quickly because I want to get some time at the, at the end. Next one is business model. When you put together, if you are looking for funds on Friday, um, but actually, even if you're not looking for funds, people will still want to know how you're going to get your business, how do you get paid, what you want to grow into, what new things are you going to develop, and how long might it take. So if you do want investment, there's a really good VC way of venture capital company describing this. If you, if you imagined a triangle and one said <clears throat> risk, reward, time, so is it risky if I invest in this person? What am I going to get back if I do? And how long will it take? And right in the middle is the most important thing in that triangle. And that's you. It's the team. People invest in people. They don't invest in bits of paper, business plans, and a trademark. Okay? If you do need investment, let people know what you've invested yourself. So if, for example, you've invested a whole load of time, you've done a whole load of research, You've been up and down to Edinburgh on the train to talk to potential customers. That's as good as money. You don't have to be naturally rich or go to the bank of Mara and Par and all that good sort of stuff. OK, investment is is a wide expression. It's not just about dosh. It's not just about money. But the next box is probably one of the most important boxes, and that's team. They want to know why you or the people you're working with are so brilliant okay they also want to know that if things don't work out and they want to help you whether you would be open to help 
there's an expression called pivoting. Probably about 40 to 60% of new startups pivot. And all that means is they think, this is a good idea. Whoops, maybe it needs to be modified into something else. And we used to call it business by ricochet when I was younger. This is a good idea. No, it isn't. Oh, my God, we'll go back over it. No, let's try this. And eventually you ricochet, bounce your way to the right to the right thing, to the right area. And then what you want to end up on pitch is you remember we said at the beginning, that shock and awe, imagine your, imagine your grandmother's on a kidney blood dialysis machine. What you want to end up is saying, well, please help us not let the grid be hacked. Join us with this investment. Help those people with emotional responses that we spoke about at the beginning. Help us help you, help them with a new piece of AI emotional tracking. Or those people that are so bored with their existing perfume and fragrance, let's open up a whole new world of swells, smells, swells, smells to them. Okay, see how it works? So just to sum up, real listener train of thought, remember? What do you do? What's the problem? What can you do to fix it? This is what it looks like. Is it unique? Customer traction? Anybody else think it's a good idea? How are we going to make a sustainable business? In other words, so you can stay in business. How much money do we need to start it? Why I'm or you're the best person to do it? And let me remind you of the big problem we're solving. Can you see how it all sort of pulls together? Does that make sense to you, Mo? That does. The question that came to my mind was, what what, what's, what has been your favourite opener, Rog, uh, in terms of any pitches that you've come across? Because I really love the example that you mentioned. Was that your favourite? And No, and my favourite. My, that was one of my favourite because we, we used props. We plunged the room into darkness for 10 seconds, and 10 seconds is a long time. Mm. But another one, this is to do with a drug that could identify... It, it's to do with... Pro, every cell has proteins wrapped around it and this trainee doctor had invented this new way of determining to do with lifestyle <clears throat> and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how she did it she walked she walked into the room and it's full of real grown-up i get little prickles when i when i when i hear this mm. real grown-up medical clinicians prof professors of oncology which is cancer all sorts of things. and she walked in and she just stood there she was only 20 bleh, 20, 21, 22, maybe mm. only three or four years older than you. And she <laughs> walked in and she just walked in and she said, if I could tell you the chances of you catching cancer in the next 10 years, would you bother to listen to me for the next five minutes? Wow. And just stop talking like I did. And all of their faces was just... Wow. Wow. Powerful question. So, okay, you're probably launching stuff that isn't life-threatening, but think of ways in that you can do it. And if I was working with you in a workshop, I'd go around all of you, helping you to tease out some fun ways of doing shock and awe, okay? Mm. So that's the easy bit. Oh, my goodness, they're saying that's the easy bit. What's the hard bit? Well, the hard bit is getting over that bump that Mo was talking about, which is to get your head above the wall and to actually start presenting, okay? Gosh, it even links this, doesn't it, Mo? I'm quite impressed, but we've never rehearsed this before between the two of, you, two of us. <laughs> what, what, what's your name again, Mo? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, so how do you present? Well, ah, oh, gosh, this is so important, and it's something that that you you have to embrace, and if you don't embrace it, you're never going to be good at it. And I, I had, before I started work, um, I was doing some part-time jobs working in a shop. And I was working in a camping shop in Tolwood, which is near Surbiton. And there were a couple of young guys who owned it. And they were they were lovely. They were a bit, bit rough, bit, you know, sort of brutal, but said, you're customers. So when you somebody sees you for the first time, it's really important. Are you sitting down? Are you standing up? When you come in to present, so selling in a shop is nearly pitching, if you think about it, okay? So how come you've been in a shop and you get ignored or they're standing around talking with each other or they're sitting having a cup of coffee? Well, immediately you're feeling, well, they don't give a damn about me. Why the hell should I give a damn about you? So when you present, 
decide where you're going to sit and stand where you do it. Okay. I can't tell you exactly how right now because we're not in a presentation environment. But the thing that is most important, now this applies whether you're presenting, going for a job or whatever, first impressions. People will subconsciously make up their mind about you to a, to a real fickle level, real shallow level, in about the first one and a half seconds. What do you look like? In my old days, <laughs> your mother or dad would say, make sure you've got clean shoes on, okay? Because people look down at your shoes, and if you can't be bothered to clean your shoes, that means you don't bother about the person you're talking to. But first impressions, dress, voice projection. If I was doing this session now to a load of 60-year-old professors, I wouldn't be wearing this. So try and make it relevant to the people. If you need to speak in a particular way to people do, but speak with confidence, project your voice. You're going to be absolute butterflies. I would normally use the S word at this stage, but I won't. You would be very concerned. So harness, you know what adrenaline is. Harness that adrenaline because adrenaline is good and just walk in there and say, this is what I'm good at. I've got the best AI emotional app in the galaxy. I do the best graphics in this part of the world, in this marketplace. And you know what? My perfumes are better than anything else that's on the market in this particular flavor line. This is what I'm good at. Can I ask a quick question? Do you have any tips for projecting the voice? Like um, diaphragm, I don't know, diaphragm breathing or just like, yeah, how, it's, can it's we, how can we? Yeah, how can very, you voice? very hard to do it in Zoom. Mm. But if you talk from here, rather from here, if you talk from your mouth, it'll only come out of your mouth. If you talk from deep down, it will project and come out. Mm. And always when you're talking, talk to the person who's not immediately in front of you. Talk to the back of the room. Don't shout. <clears throat> in drama, it's called a stage whisper. People can actually shout a whisper with it sounding like a whisper. And there are there are things on YouTube. And Mo, if you ever do this in 3D, I'd be delighted to come along and do some 3D voice projection stuff. Oh, amazing. And because what we're talking about today is only on 2D. And we used to do that for heavy corporates. When you are presenting, and if there's two or three of you presenting, one of you may not, or two of you may not be doing something, but make sure that you're always on and focused. I've seen pitches where there's a team of three or four people pitching and the one person who's talking obviously is presenting to the audience. The other three are looking around like this, completely disengaged. And the audience sub subtext will be, well, if, if they're so damn bored with it, how the hell do you expect me to be engaged? So always ensure that you're on. And sometimes you're going to get questions. And when you get questions, you've really got to use those listening skills. You've got to read the client in the room. Reading the client in the room means it's empathizing. This is why I'm not having a go at you folks, but I love to see people's faces. If I see people looking down on their phone, I know that's my fault because I haven't engaged them. And there's no point in me saying to them, do you realize how much time I've spent on this pitch? The least you could do is listen to me. It's incumbent upon me to create that carrot in front of the donkey for them to bother to listen to me. Okay, well, I, I see a laughing imagery. I, I can't see everybody's things here, but you, you, you get my drift, don't you? So the other thing as well is when you walk out, you know, the first major presentation I did was for Diageo, which is a large FMCG company. And I was, oh God, I think I was 20, 23, 24, and we'd been flown out to Toronto. And I had to stand up in front of 300 people. And I was absolutely, can I say bricking it, Mo? Is that allowed? I was <laughs> That's, yeah, absolutely bricking myself. <laughs> I was absolutely bricking it. Mm -hmm. And somebody said to me, Roger, just know your first 60 seconds. Because if you know your first 60 seconds, you won't dry up like an actor. And mm -hmm. I can still remember my first three sentences. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen an ideal partnership. Working with Utel International should and could form an ideal partnership. And I went on and on. And what that did was I get prickles on my arm. That meant I was into it. I got into it. I didn't freeze. Okay. And the other thing is when you're nervous, people talk very quickly like this and everybody's thinking, oh my God, what's he talking about? And they've just had to maybe listen to 14 other people. If you deliver your first four sentences, 
one to each corner of the room. Do you know what's going to happen? A, it's going to slow you down, one sentence each corner. And secondly, everybody in that room is going to feel as if you recognize them as an alive human being. Because you haven't just stared down talking to the bloke in the front row who's chewing his gut or winking at you. Okay. <laughs> and the, the other thing that you should try and do an audience is to try and get some empathy straight away. Try and talk their language. Try and make it real for them. Say, I do know what it's like when you've got this problem. You remember, it's, it's that what recognizing the pain at the beginning. It's not your pain. It's their pain. Imagine your grandmother's on a dialysis machine. Would you like to know your propensity to catch cancer? Okay. So that's great. <clears throat> now, here's the good news and the bad news. You're a package. Okay. Slides are one thing. Okay. Um, slides are slides. And I can go on and on about what you should and shouldn't put on a slide. And somewhere in here, I've got a reference later. on. But at the end of the day, you are that thing made of endoplasm and you are a package. There's a real bright bloke, I won't read his name out here, but he established, and there's been a couple of other studies, what comes out of your mouth is only 7%. Only 7%? You've got to be joking. How you say it is so important. I wanted to play a game with you, which I rehearsed with my wife this morning, but, but we couldn't do it because Mo and I, Mo was going to introduce me. I wanted to come on and say, morning. My name is Roger Frosch, and uh, Mose asked me to do uh, a pitching thing for you. And over the next 75 minutes, I'm going to explain to you uh, what we're going to do. Now, if I'd done that, um, you'd have thought, what sort of a lunatic, as opposed to, good morning, my name is Roger Frosch, and what we're going to do this morning is to explain ways in which you can create such a compelling narrative. See the difference? Words are only 7%, the voice is worth a lot. And when you present in person, not on Zoom, OMG, body language. If you walk around like this, closed gesture, you've all heard about, so be an open gesture. Eye contact, I'm trying to look in the camera while I'm talking to you. Yeah, I've got a screen over there and I've got another screen over there, but hopefully most of the time, I'm looking down the throat of the camera. OK, gestures. You see, I'm moving my hand around. Not that easy. But if I was standing up, my whole body would be a, a weapon to engage you and smile. OK, hopefully I'm trying to smile. And if you do move on a stage, move naturally. I've seen people walk around like a wooden duck and it just makes everybody think, what sort of a lunatic is this? Because they're all nervous. A bit like John Cleese, anybody who knows John Cleese. Just move naturally. <laughs> And if you want to walk across the screen and just say, and look at this over here and look at that over there. You're a human being. They're a human being as well. OK. OK, so now we're going to get into the slide bit. Now, I can make this really complicated or I can make it simple. It's called working memory. The human brain and my, my wife teaches psychology to A-level students. The human brain can cope with what you hear and what you see, but it can't do it at exactly the same time. What it does is it immediately switches things off and on and off and on. And I don't know whether when you're at school, they probably have slides. They put stuff up sometimes on the screen and the teacher will talk about something that doesn't relate to the slide or not pick up keywords. And you're thinking, oh, which bit of the slide is that on? Am I in the right place? Have they forgotten the wrong thing? If you make your slides in a way that if I'm talking about, I found a new way of wrapping teddy bears. What I want to see maybe is a picture of a wrapped teddy bear. I don't want to see a slide that says, I found a new way of wrapping teddy bears. Because if you put too many words on a slide, the human brain will read it quicker than the human mouth can say it. Okay. The other thing is non-words and fillers. There is a, a very annoying thing when you're pitching. It's great in normal social life when people use the same non-words and fillers. One of the most irritating non-words in business is like, or know what I mean, or um, or how do you feel about that? And 
ums are there because the human brain hasn't worked out what to say next. So the simple solution is talk slower. If you use words like um, it makes people think that you're not that confident. Okay. At the end of a pitch, hopefully, you're going to get some questions. And the way in which you deal with questions is really simple. You don't know what the on earth is going to be thrown at you. And there might be more than one or two of you fielding the questions. And I don't know whether you've ever been to times when somebody's asked a question from the front row, you're sitting at the back, the person answers the question, but you have no idea what the question was. So therefore, you don't know what the hell the answer is about. So when somebody asks you a question, repeat it back for the sake of the audience. Mo, ask me a question. My question is, what... Uh... My question is, what do you think the future holds in terms of startups? What, what, what's, the, what's the trend that excites you the most that's coming up in these startups that you, you mentor? So the question is, what's the most important element that I'm beginning to feel is starting up as a trend in startups? Mm -hmm. Well, I feel it is such and such and such and such. So by doing that, you all now know what Mo's asked the question. And because my, my, there's a little thing in your brain, which is called the echoic store, it's a way of remembering something without you having to use any bandwidth. While I'm repeating that question, I'm actually thinking what the answer might be as well. So mm. it's a really good technique. It's also a way of paying homage, recognizing, being polite to the person that's answering, answering the question and, the, and the, the people that are listening to the answer. Now, I could spend a whole day with you folks telling you what to put on and what not to put on a slide. I'm going to give you some references now. And if you want to take a picture of that screenshot, <clears throat> if you are doing a pitch, look at all of those three hypertext links. It will save you so much grief, you have no idea. It's real grown up stuff. You'll see pitches from Uber, Facebook, um, Airbnb, all the successful pitches. If you If you Google that, and these are pitches that were done right at the beginning of their lives, okay? This wasn't actually just to get business. Was just, this was to get finance or to introduce their crazy idea to people for the first time. At the end of the day, when you pitch, this is my penultimate slide, so I've tried to leave 10 minutes, Mo, for a bit of, bit of chat if we want to do it. If not, I'll, I'll nap off. Um, <laughs> at the end of the day... When you're pitching, it's not just about giving information. You have to excite people. You have to inspire them and inform them. And that way you get engagement. Very hard to do a pitch 101 on pitching in 2D in 45 minutes. But I hope I've somehow tried to keep you engaged. And my final message is, Please enjoy the journey. Life's too short. And as, and as somebody said to me, and then I passed it on to my kids, what's the worst thing that could go wrong? You make a pitch. You know everything you want to say. You perhaps screw it up. They don't know you want to, that you've screwed it up. And actually now they don't cut your arms off or put you in a darkened room if you screw up on a pitch. Imagine you go to a pop concert or the theatre, you actually don't want the actors to fail. You want them to succeed because you'll find it embarrassing as well. So the audiences are actually on your side. And if you enjoy that journey, it's infectious. Mm -hmm. And the more you do it, the more fun you'll have. You can tell I'm smiling at the moment. I just love pitching. And the more I do it, the more fun I have with the audience. And on that, I'm going to say back to the studio. I'm going to stop sharing and you can all poke your tongue out at me or just tell me to go away. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, man. Thank you so very much. Giving you a big round of applause. Feel free to drop your emoji round of applause. If we can't do the, the thing that we do in butter, which is get go crazy, but please do. Thank you so very much, Roger. And, and also thank you for um, just giving the real, it, this, it feels like it's, it's really real now. Um, I think that's that's the, the 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 huge shift we've you you've just set us up perfectly for this week because now real world 
how you know lifting the proverbial bonnet on how things are done uh, in startup land. So thank you so much, Arfan. That was you know thank you so much. That was amazing, really helpful. I think the other thing I would say is because we got a couple of minutes is some cheats. I am naturally a pretty lazy person. If I can find an easier way of doing something, I will. So if you Google best pitches, best investment pitches on YouTube, there are some pretty awful entertaining ones, but there's some really good ones. And my most of the good stuff that I've come up with is because I work with some really brilliant people or nick their ideas. Go and nick other people's ideas. See how they do it. Look mm-hmm. at the slides. Look at the way in which they speak, the intonation. We What we haven't covered is when you're doing a Zoom pitch, and I guess, crikey, I've just realised on Friday, you're all doing Zoom pitches, aren't you, and things? Mm-hmm. Yeah? You have to use the weapon of your voice a lot more than if you were doing it in 3D, if you were standing up. And the way you can use your voice is if you're excited, you can speak a bit quick and go a bit higher. But if you want to be really serious about something, slow down. Just look in the camera. And, you know, in this sense, it's not rude to point. It's rude to point. Remember the audience, if they're sitting in front of you, but actually lean in. Use all of those weapons. Remember body language, 55%. Voice, 38. Words are only seven. There's one thing I want you to take out of it. It's that today. Seven, 38, and 55. Super powerful. And one thing that I've noted from a research done on Zoom calls versus you know in person, um, Zoom actually takes up more of your energy in order to engage and make up for the fact that you're not there in person. So that was an interesting article with the fact that we can still exude a lot of energy, expend a lot of our energies in order to, like, as you notice, Roger, Roger's just, you know, trying to make you feel a certain way when he was introducing uh, this, this workshop. So really well done. Thank you so very much. Any questions? I really appreciate you, Roger. And any, any questions from, from, from you guys, feel free to put it in. I'm just going to, uh i'm just going to mention okay yeah i guess everyone's going to be ready getting ready for the next workshop as well and taking time for lunch and breakfast whatever it needs uh but i'm just going to put another thing of that to cheat pest investments look at intonation look at the the way that they you know pause for effect whatever it is uh engaging with a hook initially projecting your voice all these things and as roger demonstrated looking into the camera not the actual screen your camera leaning in if you need pausing taking a break having fun with it and focusing on how you want people to feel rather than just you know giving a few bullet points to them so brilliant brilliant points and yeah cool thank you so much Roger I think every everybody's you know got so much food for thought uh and really really and hopefully we'll see you on Friday as well Mo, Mo I'm very happy for you to um obviously yes. you're on the pitch canvas yes 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 so we'll be sending them all uh, pitch canvas now as well the three minute pitch canvas i think they put it into the chat earlier on we'll send right, well, hopefully i'll well. see you friday and i'll be ticking those boxes off have a, <laughs> cheers, have a good day reason. mo thank you for letting me trash your reputation <laughs> cheers baby i'll do the same for you anytime <laughs> nice one roger all right yeah. everyone thank you so much see you at 2 30 yeah for investment readiness see you soon